welcome to my new video. This one's a bit different and um, I'll do a review on this drone. There's some different specs listed to what I hear. So this supposedly is a sub 250 gram drone. It says it does 4K, 26 minutes battery life or flight time, 3x a gimbal, 3000 meters range. Now probably the only thing you won't test is the range because uh, you won't be able to see it at 3000 meters. But let's see how we get on. I want to check that this is under 249 grams. This obviously isn't a calibrated scales. This is just cheap kitchen scales. Well, it says 241. Obviously there's no SD card in that. But let's just compare that to the Mini, the Mini 3, which is the only Mini drone I have right now. Yeah. I'm glad that they are not calibrated, but that's very close look. I'm going to charge this now. For you, this is going to be a couple of seconds, but for me, it might be a couple of hours, it might be a couple of days until I actually get to fly it. But I'm going to charge it and we'll see how it performs in flight. Our first flight test of this bit of kit. So batteries are charged. Uh, I've been reading the manual. It's a tad windy actually. But um, so what's left for me to do, I've installed the app on my phone. I now need to put my operator ID on it because this is a, a camera, drone that's got a camera on it, so it needs an operator ID. Um, technically, you don't need a flyer ID for this, but I obviously have mine and a few other qualifications. So let's see how it flies. the button and you hold it again in the pack we have a set of spare propellers now a couple of thumb sticks go in there right we also have we have a, a USB C connector we have a lightning connector, which I'm going to use, and there's also one for, I think it's micro USB actually. So we're activating it, it now is connected it says. Activating the aircraft, so I'm going to start flying. It kind of looks okay from here. So I'm going to stand back a little bit. And press the takeoff button. Okay. I'm going to record in 1080 at 25 frames a second. Not a Mini 3, but this is about a third of the price. Let's get those photos. We've actually got a reasonable breeze to be fair. We'll just land without actually telling you it's landing. Aircraft height limit. Now the legal height in the UK is 120 meters. I'm going to go to, uh, let's call it 80 meters. Distance I'm going to set to legal distance in the UK, even though this had a range supposedly of I think about 3000 meters, the distance, the most you, range you get out of this is as far as you can see it. Return to home height. So that's a height it'll go to if you press the return to home button and I'm gonna set that at 40 meters. Battery 74% flight 
low power alarm I'm going to have at, at 30%. Let's go again. Right, I've got to turn off beginner mode, I think. Sun setting that way. That's quite nice, in fact, because we have two um, buttons here one for photos and one for video. Don't know quite what happened there, but I've got a distance of 250 meters and I've still got good signal. Bringing it back. So VLOS varies massively depending on um, depending on the sky conditions really, what's around it. Let's see what happens when I hit return to home now. Now I'm going to watch this as it comes back. But return to home for me is always a last resort really. If you lose sight of your drone, then hit a return to home. But I always avoid doing return to home, but I'm just doing this as a tester and see how well it actually performs. And giving it a fair chance to actually land on a big pad rather than a tiny little patch half a metre from the uh, from the grass. So this does have GPS. I've got 29 satellites. It's now slowed down. I guess it's getting closer to the ground. I've still got 52 pins in hand. So it's not stable in the air as, as DJI drones. <laughs> it's a little unceremon unceremoniously landing. Whereas a DJI drone, in my experience, have uh, sensors on the bottom and they'll sense the ground and they'll know when they're going to hit it. But that will just come down and they'll uh, say, I don't know, half a metre a second. And when it gets to a certain height by GPS, it's then going to come down at much slower speed. And that's all it does. It then just bumps onto the ground. So for some reason, the stuff on the SD card didn't save when I was here the other day. So this is another day, another test. So I want to just test the flight time and I want to see uh, how good the return home function is, how accurate it is, and I'm just going to see what happens if it loses control or connection with the controller. The return point has been crashed. Please pay attention to the position of the return point. Right, now we're going to see how long the flight time is. <laughs> As you can see, because it's got no optical flow sensors on the base of the drone looking down, which are basically little cameras, it's really struggling 
to actually hold position. It's just using DPS. So you can see it moves about quite a lot. Right, so for some other reason, I've been trying to record video and it won't record. I don't know why that is. It did record initially, whether the SD card isn't a 64 gigabyte or whether, I don't know why, but it's recorded probably five minutes of 4K footage and that's it. 4K at 15 frames a second of mine. So that's not gonna be a very big file. It might be a gigabyte or two. But let's see how the, um, we are 43% have been flying for about 12 minutes. So I think we took off about uh, 22 and we just landed at 42. Now, it is actually quite windy today. So I, th I guess 24 minutes is probably kind of fair. I mean, you never get quite what it says on the, on the, uh, in the spec from it, but within 10%, that's not bad. And the last two, well, last about minute, I had to kind of keep holding up because it wanted to land, but it's landed on now 0%. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. But I'm just gonna do a little comparison now. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of mini three footage. That's the only drone I have that's in this kind of weight class. Um, but you'll see a comparison between what this has just shot and what you'll get with a DJI drone. Now the mini three is obviously the, this is a mini three pro, so it's not really a fair comparison, but I'll try and dial settings down just so you can get an idea. Right, so I'm setting this at 1080 at 25 frames a second, which is, I think, the same as what the uh, the other one was <laughs> doing. Let's see what happens. So in all fairness, I'm normally shooting 4K with the Mini Pro, but uh, what do you think of these two bits of footage? You can see the one on the right is certainly not as smooth as the, as the DJI drone. So seemingly one of the big problems with this is going to be the return home function doesn't work if it loses signal. So this is going to be like uh, one of your Boxing Day posts you're going to see on Facebook, drone landed in my garden because somebody's flown it too far, it's lost signal and it's just landed. So if it loses signal, there's no, I can't see an option in the app to say that uh, you can either make it hover or if you can make it return to home, it'll just land. So normally with the DJI drones, it will do one of those two. And the other thing is you don't have very much time. If you lose signal, it's gonna land within like about 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Would I recommend this? Well, bearing in mind, this was, I'll put a link in the description to where this is so you can link it and, and see how much it is. But um, when it was sent to me, the price for this was, was a couple of hundred pounds. Now, this is unfair to compare the two because this, uh, with the Fly More kit, with three batteries, probably more like a thousand pounds. But let's let's not think about this one for a minute. Let's think about a Mini Two. Let's think about a, a Mavic Mini One, which you'll probably pick up secondhand, maybe a Fly More kit for about the same price. You might even get a Mini Two for that sort of price, or Mini SE. The point is, there are DJI drones that are this weight and we'll probably do better than this. So let's look at it. So flight time, 24 minutes, that's fair. It does do about 24 minutes. The uh, GPS, it has GPS, yes, but it doesn't have all the features as in it won't do return to home if you lose signal. It won't hover if you lose signal, it'll just land. So that's a big problem. That kind of causes you really to worry about uh, what happens when you fly it too far without realizing and it's just gonna land, you're gonna lose it. So 200 pounds really will be straight out the door. You know, this could only last your first flight. 200 pounds DJI drone, 
you'll keep using for months and months and months because it'll come back to you. Video quality and picture quality. Now you can really gauge this for yourself, but for instance, the Mavic Mini 1 will do 2.7K at around about 30 frames a second. And it's reasonable quality. You know, this is listed at 4K, but it's not really 4K, so that's 4K at 15 frames a second, which is like saying, I don't know, it's, it's meaningless really. Nobody shoots at 15 frames a second. It looks jerky. Um, it looks like, I wouldn't even say an 80s video recorder, you know? If you buy a Mini, a Mini 1, Mavic Mini 1, or even something like a Spark, you'll get some decent video out of it. As in, video you can share on Facebook, and nobody really will tell much difference between this and a Mavic Mini 1 uh, recording. You can tell, but for, for most people, if you just want to muck about, you're not going to tell the difference. The quality of this feels right, actually. It feels reasonably good. Um, it feels quite sturdy. You know, the batteries, it comes with uh, two batteries for the price, which is better than this and better than and DJI drones. I also wonder about spares for this. You know, props, we're going to be able to get props for it. You'd guarantee people are going to hit trees with these. As far as flying, this is concerned. So this actually is very skittish in the sky. It moves about quite a lot. You'll see in the, in the video that it, it moves about like this. Well, this one pretty much, even in wind, is, is pretty steady. You'll see when I did the, uh, the battery test, how much it moved about here. It moved up and down in the, in the air. It moved left and right, and that should have been stable if I could show you footage of this it's perfectly stable even in strong winds it does fly though you know if you're careful with this you will get flight out of it it's not that bad for flying but obviously what this doesn't have there's no sensor on the bottom of this whereas this one has two uh, cameras on it two little cameras you can't actually get any use out of these cameras other than the fact they look at what's on the ground and they will kind of work out where the pattern is and they can hover above it so it helps the GPS optical flow sensors so even I think the mini ones have optical flow sensors really very useful because it gives you a much more stable flight could I recommend it if it's all you can get if it's the only new drone you can get maybe but um, I would say don't buy a new drone buy a second hand one because it's better value for money I did a video a while back about watches before you buy a new drone and really we talk about uh, what you want to use it for so if you want to fly it it'll fly that's fair enough uh, do you want to take pictures with it it'll take pictures but they are really you're looking at uh, I don't know pre iPhone pictures really I think if you only want to fly a drone yeah it'll do if you want to do pictures or video buy something that may be secondhand that you can do pictures and video you're not gonna get bored with in an afternoon if you sent me this I wish I could say really nice things about it, but it's not brilliant. <laughs> if you like the video, then click the thumbs up. And if you enjoyed the content, then click the subscribe button. Thank you, I'll catch you next time.